Hello everyone and welcome to Grace Thoughts with Chill. And today is going to be huge because uh, what we're going to discuss uh, today is something that is uh, very fundamental to Christianity. If you are a Christian, it's all about the blood of Jesus. It's all about the blood of Jesus. The blood that was shed. This is something that is central to Christianity. We believe that Jesus Christ shed his blood for us. Jesus shed his blood for you. Jesus shed his blood for me. And that's awesome. But what does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, because how you understand the shed blood of Jesus says a lot about whether you are relating to God right or not. So I want to just share a few things with you because when we say it, we it's become obvious. It's become almost a cliche to say Jesus shed his blood for us. Jesus died for us. But who needed the blood to be shed? Who needed this blood? Who requested this blood to be shed? And that's where uh, many Christians part ways because what you say about this question tells us whether you are under grace or under the law, whether you are in the right covenant or you are in the wrong covenant, whether you are relating uh, according to kingdom principle or not. So that's what we want to share. Who needed the blood to be shed? Was it God? Now, some Christians say God needed the blood to be shed. And, and you see, if God the Father is the one who requested or demanded that blood be shed, it says a lot about him. It says, it brings this Christianity, this idea of religion where God the Father is uh, Dracula. You know Dracula? Th this came up actually in a discussion I was, we were having some time back. And I discovered that so many people, this is how they have the wrong and teach the wrong idea about God. God is a Dracula. Dracula is a movie that came out, I think, in the 80s or so. And it's about this, this monster who would not be satisfied unless he drank blood. So he had these terrible teeth. You can Google it for yourself and find out about Dracula. And he will drink people's blood. And people have this idea of a bloodthirsty God. And this is how they explain the bloodthirsty God in the Old Covenant. says this bloodthirsty God demanded that blood be shed. And therefore they had to sacrifice animals and bulls and goats and lambs and all kinds of animals to satisfy him and to calm him down. It gives you the idea of uh, a wrathful God, an angry God that need, need, needs blood, you know. And, and then when Jesus Christ, his son, shed his blood, then God was satisfied and refused or, or did not destroy people. And, and this is taught and, and it's, it's, it's a nasty thing, you know, animal sacrifice. You know, those who are... Who, 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 who are concerned about animal rights will not take, it, take kindly to, <laughs> to that kind of preaching. But that aside, is this the right idea of God? Is this who God the Father is, who has always been looking for blood? You know, blood, blood is, is the life of the animal and, and, and life had to be taken away for God's wrath to be appeased. Even grace preachers preach this. Thousands of people, all kinds of people preach this. Many religions preach this and God is angry. But when, because of the... The, the blood of his son being shed, God decided to forgive uh, uh, the sins of his people and, and stayed his hand from destroying them. You know, even the Passover is preached like that around Easter. You hear this kind of thing, you know, because of the reason of the blood, uh, God did not punish as he intended. You know, these, these are things that are taught about God and it's quite unfortunate because these are the things that drive people away from God. Because, you know, who wants to be in the presence of such a God who is bloodthirsty? And this is just because religion has kind of twisted a lot of things about God, you know, about who the true nature of God. And I think it's, it's, it's a blessing that Jesus came, that Jesus came to teach us, you know, what, what he, this, this blood really came to do. And I'm going to read from Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24, and that, that's it. And, and it says, we have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, 
That's why I keep talking about this new covenant. Not, not the old covenant. The new covenant. And to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So if you want to understand this blood theology, you need to really go to the blood of Abel. What did the blood of Abel do? So in the story of Cain and Abel, we are very familiar with it. I'm not going to go into it. But there is a case of sin and Cain murders Abel and Abel's blood cries out for vengeance. Now, what is vengeance according to the Jews? Vengeance is basically blood for blood, eye for eye, you know, uh, tooth for tooth. You, t- you took my life, God, take his life. That's what the blood of Abel was basically crying. God, take his life to pay for this life that has been taken, my life that has been taken. So by saying the blood of Jesus doesn't speak that. And, and we need to get this. We need to get this properly. He says he speaks better things. Now, he doesn't, he doesn't say he speaks uh, just opposite things. Yes, he doesn't cry out for vengeance. You can see he cries out for forgiveness. But there is better is a comparative. It's a comparative. Good, better, best. It's a comparative between two things. This is good and this is better if there are two things. So there's the blood of Abel and then there's the blood of Jesus. See, the blood of Jesus speaks better things. So understanding the blood of Abel is very, very important because it shows us something that the Demand. This is the very first time that blood is demanded. Now, the demand of blood is a human demand. It is the blood of Abel that cried out for blood to be shed. And from that time till today, we have been crying out for blood to be shed. We have been crying out. See, it's like a father forgives his son for all his sins, but the son refuses to accept the forgiveness. The, the, the son thinks, oh, my father is angry, and therefore my father is supposed to punish me and give me the highest punishment. Now, what's the highest punishment according to the Jews? Death, the shedding of blood. This was the highest. You can't, uh, I heard that somebody was sentenced to death 10 times. But if you've killed him the first time, that's it. That's the highest punishment. You can't kill a dead person, you know. So it's good to understand that death remains the highest punishment, the highest vengeance that the blood of humans has been crying out for. So when you look at how the Israelites now developed their religion, it was it, re- it moved around this sacrifice or shedding of blood, shedding of blood. So when the animal is killed, the animal is killed on behalf of of the sinner. So that was their understanding, but that was not the demand of God. And this is the very first thing. It was a demand of human blood crying out for vengeance or crying out for appeasement. We we are actually the ones who need the blood to be shed. That's the whole point of this video. We are the ones who needed blood to be shed. And God understood how we understood him. And to change that or to correct it, he sent his son Jesus to give us a true knowledge of who he is. Who he is. To open the way to his heart. The heart of God is full of love for us. The heart of God has always been reaching out for us. You know, religion is human beings trying to go to God. Christianity is God trying to go to human beings. In an eff- in our effort to go to God, we establish this idea that God is the one who is angry with us and needed to be appeased with blood. But in sending Jesus and walking with Jesus and in Jesus and through Jesus, Jesus, God was trying to show us that he is not the one who needs to be appeased. We are the ones who need to be appeased. So that's why the sacrifice of Jesus is for us. He died for us. So the offering was for us. His father didn't need convincing that he loves us. His father didn't need any convincing. His father didn't need any any, any appeasement, any satisfaction. That is the, the theme of satisfaction that people preach. See, he didn't need satisfaction. We are the ones who needed satisfaction. We are the ones. This is what Jesus was trying. You look at um, the woman caught in adultery. And, and the understanding is that uh, the wages of sin is death. And if, he is, if she's caught in adultery, she should be killed by God. But God... 
was absolutely not interested in killing any sinner. So what did the Jews decide? They decide we have to shed her blood. And that's why they pick up stones to kill her, to shed her blood. You look at the, 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 the one of uh, uh, the, the, the Stephen, Martyr, the, the, the Martyr Stephen. The, he was killed because of the same thing. He had blasphemed, in quotes, according to them, and his blood has to, had to be shed. It's, it's always, it has always been man crying for blood to be shed. And that's why the, the Israelites, go and read about the origins of, of Jewish sacrifice and the influence of the, the idolatrous neighbors of, of, of the Jews on their system of religion. It's where they borrowed this idea. And when, when God came in Christ Jesus, he began to show us that like in the, prodigal, the story of the prodigal son, the lost sheep, the lost coin, he begins to show us he is the one looking for us. We are the lost sheep. We are the angry ones. We are the ones who run away. We are the people who run away. We are the people who run away, not him. So he is Adam who hid after his sin. So it's God who goes in search, goes in search. And the cross is part of the search. The cross is when he has found him, he will take the sheep. When he has found, found the lost sheep, he will take the sheep and put on his shoulder. That's what the cross is all about. That's God trying to tell us, I love you. I, I, I have nothing against you. I just want you to come to me. I just want you to be my friend, to be dear to me, to be in my heart. That's what this blood thing is all about. So we needed a, a convincing that the ultimate sacrifice has been made for us. The ultimate, we think that the highest punishment for sin would be a shedding of blood, a killing of somebody, and God said, all right, that's, that's it. He is my son, and he has shed his blood. Nothing else preventing you to come. The veil is torn. Come into my heart. Come into the Holy of Holies and embrace me. This is what it's all about. This is what... The, remember, we're not saying that, that the, some people say God of the Old Testament, God of the New Testament. No, it's the same God, but two different understandings. And, and the understanding I'm following here is the right understanding. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So what does he say? I am the way to the Father. I am the life of the Father. I am the truth about the Father. So what is the truth about the Father? He is the one in search of us. He is the one who cooperated, worked together with his son to tell you that he loves you. And whatever punishment you think that is necessary for your sin so that you can come back to him, he has made it in Christ Jesus. So be blessed. I hope you share this, share this with people so that you begin to change their understanding. This is why there is so much religion and, no, and little change. Because people are not allowing the Father to transform their hearts through the cross of Jesus and through his shed blood. God bless you and see you next Saturday.